for decades, maybe forever. Uh, really what we've had is the financial institutions, the heads of the financial institutions, tiny little group, they all talk to each other. And maybe occasionally they talk to their regulators, maybe not enough, but occasionally they talk to their regulators. And now they've been supported by literally hundreds of billions of taxpayer dollars. And the conversation has to change. It means the American people also now have a seat at the table. We're supposed to get a lot of information about what's going on within that tight little group. And we're supposed to be able to, I think, to demand some accountability for what's been happening here. And so the, the whole tension, I think, right now is to try to break this open. And I think the stress tests are part of this. The idea that this, you're, you run it as a, you know, here's a headline, here's something we're talking about. We are all involved in understanding what's happening with this financial system and asking for accountability from it and asking for clarity in the government programs. That's a that's so a. So you think we're change. getting it, I, I, Ariana? You're disappointed. In, I mean, what what do you call the stress test? The, they don't. The, I say they don't pass the smell test. The, no, no smell test. So, so let's say it this way. Let's remember last October where we started this. Henry Paulson, Secretary of the Treasury, and he says. $350 billion, and it goes out the door with no strings attached at all. No. And in fact, don't talk to me about it. When we ask questions like, um, where's the money going? He said, I didn't ask. You know, and I, uh, uh, it's illegitimate for you even to be pushing this question on me. In other words, uh, what was the rating on transparency, on accountability? Uh, zero. And clarity, we can talk about whether or not he even correctly described his own programs. So. That's where we started. So we start this program in a hole that, you know, it takes binoculars to see the bottom of it. Now, along comes Treasury, too, and Secretary Geithner's in place, and they've made some moves. A little more transparency, they've put some accountability rules in place. He's divided it up, says we're going to do multiple programs, we're going to look into home mortgage foreclosures. That's movement in the right direction. Now stress test becomes the big moment. Okay, so where are we on stress test? I've been asking for more than two months for the details about how the stress test works. You know, before we talk about this, you've really got to know, so how much stress is in the stress test? Is it a two mile an hour walk on a flat treadmill or is this really an uphill hard pull? And you can't do that if you don't have a lot of detail on how it works. We and understand. We and we don't have that detail. So it's a moment. The, the good news is we're talking about this. The good news is there's transparency. We're trying to get, you know, we let the American people get engaged. We let them have a seat at the table. But it's only a moment. Mm. What matters is what happens from here so going it's forward. It's good. You, it's half full it's and it's good. She said it's a moment. moment. She didn't say it's half full. She right. said it's a moment. She said the American people have a seat at the table. But at the moment, we're not being given the kind of information that we would be given if we had the kind of ownership stake we now have in these institutions. Just the, that's not capitalism. I go back to that. Scock box is supposed to be in favor of capitalism, where in a capitalist system, owners have a lot more rights than we have right I, now. I will agree with you on that point. I hear over and over again that the government shouldn't get involved because they're not the owners. You should listen to the shareholders. What about the idea that the government is a significant shareholder. We're not yet. We're not yet. Well, we not, no voting right now. It's we preferred. We own 70 percent of AIG. <laughs> right, but, uh, but the banks, <laughs> only Citigroup. Well, the, 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 point, the, the whole point, though, is that the fact that we're even talking about the taxpayer is not a good thing, right? That is not a positive. So when you talk about this small group of bankers who talk to each other and to their regulators, isn't the point to get back to that in some way? Well, and but let's be clear about how we get back to that. It's when the taxpayer's money is no longer on the table. Right. Uh, and I think that's the critical part here. And it's critical for two reasons. It's not only the question of how we're going to try to pull this bus out of the ditch, right? How we try to get the economy started and, and rolling forward. There's another set of decisions that's going to be made in the next few months. And that's what kind of road are we going to have going forward. But it would be a little bit easier if we weren't represented by what many people think are an ineffectual uh, group of politicians that can't run their own business. That's just something, right? I think there are a lot of politicians who should not be there. No question about okay. it, including the 12 but democratic senators. We don't senators, want Congress, Ariana, we don't want Congress running banks. I'd almost no. rather, I know the guys who ran the banks, they had some problems, but they can't run their own business. Absolutely, They've never the run any type of business. You can't have them running banks. I know, but then you can't have 
that kind of money that belongs to the taxpayers in the banks. I mean, this is really the quid pro quo. I'm absolutely it's a, it's fine. It's a catch 22. I'm absolutely fine with I wish the taxpayers taking, could control their own destiny. I'm taking our money back Did and the not bankers, controlling it. Were they anything. able to run the Well, that's banks? what I just said. Maybe they, they weren't. I mean, in a, in a, obviously. In a, in a free market, there's going to be booms and busts. Yeah. Right? I want to go back to Professor well, Warren. Right, go ahead. Go ahead Actually, no, you gave the perfect one on booms and busts. Yeah. Okay. It's uh, 1794. George Washington is in his first term. And what did we have? We had a credit crisis. In fact, if you read the local papers, it was described as a credit freeze. And every 10 to 15 years, we booms have and boom and bust, boom and bust, boom and bust, right? We wipe out, uh, we have we call them panics. Uh, the banks all shut down, have a complete financial system collapse, people lose their little farms, small businesses, until we hit the Great Depression. And we hit the Great Depression and said, you know, we can do better than that. We can write a set of rules that's going to make it work better than that. Mm -hmm. And so what did we do? We came up with the first one, make it safe to put your money in a bank, FDIC insurance. The second one, Glass-Steagall. Banks are going to be run like public utilities. They're going to be run boring, modest profit margins. Risk-taking will be where we can let it fail. And the third one, we get these new rules in for the SEC. Those, those three rules bought us 50 years of security happened. and prosperity. Right. And our response to that was to say, you know, regulation is just a pain. <laughs> Let's get rid of it. Uh, <clears throat> who needs it? It costs us too much. So we start pulling the threads out of the regulatory fabric. And we do it multiple ways. We change the laws, Glass-Steagall. Mm -hmm. uh, we just don't appoint new regulators for whole new areas. We let the thing burgeon and we keep the same or number let, of or, or tiny cops on the beat. we let Goldman beat. appoint the regulator. That's, That's right. We, would say. So we deregulate and we, we had information about this. Remember, first thing was the savings and loans crisis, right? We, we deregulate the SNLs and there's a big warning, 700 of them collapse because they, they don't run this right. The next one, long-term capital management. We're supposed to learn the lesson that when you sneeze in one part of the world, it's heard somewhere else. Mm -hmm. And then we hit the third one, which for me is Enron, which told us the books are dirty, right? It told us in a big public way that these institutions that are getting all these certifications from the outside, in fact, have dirty books. What were the lessons we learned from that? We just continued on our path Elizabeth, and we, we collapsed the system. Isn't that the biggest problem that Larry Summers, for example, who was one of the architects of the repeal of Glass-Steagall, is there now making the new rules? How concerned are you about that? Well, so here's what I see as my job now that I'm in this position of the Congressional Oversight <coughs> Panel. We are required by statute to make a recommendation, series of recommendations to Congress on regulatory reform. I think that this is the moment, coming back to who's in the conversation. We're going to write a new set of rules going forward. We're going to decide. Are we going back to a boom and bust world, a world in which it works really well for that tiny little group, at least in boom times, and if they put away a lot of money, uh, it'll work for them even in the bust, right, especially if they can get taxpayer support in the bust, or are we going to write a new set of rules? You've got to adjust to the fact that the market's changed, not the old rules, but you write a new set of rules that ultimately are written to benefit families across the country, to buy some prosperity, some opportunity for people to be on a level playing field, a chance to have real prosperity for American families. You see That's the, the issue. You see the SEC right now doing things, going after cases in credit default swaps like they've never done before. Is that enough or you mean an entire... No, right? no, no. That's not enough. Come on. We have so <coughs> changed the law, under-regulated, gotten the wrong regulators in there, created whole new markets that have no structure around them. We gotta have smart regulation. We gotta we, we gotta move. It's it's not going back, it's not the heavy hand. It's the kind of stuff that lets markets work. But isn't the uh, the new rules, isn't that an escalating involvement of government? Isn't it a stair step pattern? Oh, we're I don't a think a little so. more than we had? Because the FDIC is still gonna be there. And we're bet. gonna add stuff on top of that. You bet. The FDIC is still gonna be there. But look. You can do modest changes in the rules if your aim is always to get the market back to working properly. The idea is not to keep a heavy hand on no. it. Let, let me give you an example. Or a state-run, you don't want a state-run economy. Uh, you you want to get uh, out, you want out as quickly as possible as a capitalist. Hey, absolutely. pointing at me. Hey. But also, you know what, there's a lot of talk about Elizabeth on the Supreme Court. And I just want to say right here, we don't want you in the Supreme Court. We want you right here <laughs> on Squawk Box. Well, that's, right? that's, that's, or if you do go to the court on Squawk Box anyway, you still come back. <laughs>
<laughs> you bother too much. Do you want to finish up on a, on a thought, or do we have time? Uh, I, th I think we got to go, but we don't. will you come back? Yeah. You bet. I'd love yeah. to. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank Without you. Ariana, yeah. you'll come back? I'll come. Without cookies again? I I want Ariana. She's fun. <laughs> she is. Chairwoman, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. Us. We appreciate it. Thank you.